So I got an email the other day from a student in one of our private mentorship programs and they made a huge paint correction mistake. Let's talk about it so you guys don't have to. So I want to show you guys the before and after pictures here so you pick up on a little bit of what's going on. This was a pretty intense paint correction job done and you guys can see there's tons of swirls, tons of imperfections beforehand and of course after what you see is really the swirl marks and those surface level defects are gone. What are the defects that are still on the paint? It's actually something that I like to call freckling. This is something that you can see really obviously in the picture, not to mention the rids, the etchings, and other imperfections that you can't necessarily see in the picture and yet are still present on the paint. This is one of the most common mistakes that detailers make in paint correction, and I actually have a very similar situation of me doing paint correction on a car like the one in the pictures. It's a black Toyota Camry that was unbelievably damaged. Most detailers in the beginning stages overestimate what is going to be a accomplished through the paint correction process. And from these before and after pictures, it actually highlights the number one thing that is accomplished through paint correction and the number one thing that is not accomplished through paint correction. Namely, you are going to be able to remove swirl marks like you see in the before and after pictures really well with proper technique and proper products and tools. What are not going to be removed are really what could be thought of as structural imperfections in the paint, whether it be drip marks from the way the panel was actually painted in the first place deep etchings that need to be wet sanded, deep rids that need to be wet sanded, or again, that freckling effect that kind of looks like a car was just sandblasted and it's got tiny little bumps all over it that are raised or indented into the paint itself. Now, before we talk about how to solve this problem so it does not become an issue with the customer in the post detail conversation, I wanna make sure you guys know the free resource we have in the YouTube description box below. It's called the Essential Detailing Toolbox. This is the top 12 tools and products that I suggest for any detailer who's getting started in the business or who wants to level up their game. It took me a long time to find the right tools and products that are at the right price that actually accomplish the job in the right way and it comes with a free video series to share with you how not to use these products so you don't damage anything. Click the link below, put your email in, we'll send it straight to you. It's a very, very helpful free resource for you. Now let's talk about how to fix this type of paint correction problem. Now like I said, I relate to this email because this is something I've done many times as I was growing as a detailer in my own business and of course reflecting on that Toyota Camry that it immediately made me think of. These are the types of paint correction and details that actually require more communication. Now, I know you guys are tired of hearing me talk about communication, communication, communication. So there are three main ways I think a solution can be introduced to this equation on the front end. Number one, often when a detailer communicates what can and cannot be done with a customer in a paint correction situation like this, it's confusing to the customer because they don't really have an idea of what it actually looks like in the real world in terms of the limitations and then what can be done. I like to perform a sort of test spot in real time to show them on a small part of the door or the hood and maybe even breaking up the test spot by area of damage, meaning the hood and the roof might be more damaged for obvious reasons and the rest of the car might require less correction or be less damaged and therefore it will actually get better results. And you can show a test spot on both of these areas to show the customer in real time what can be done and what cannot be done. Secondly, this situation emphasizes why I always talk about getting video content or content from each detail that you can use and repurpose in the future, whether it be through Google reviews, Facebook reviews, actually giving it to the person to post on their social media or even to post to your social media afterwards. You can also use past details where you've had similar instances to show current customers what did happen and what did not happen to illustrate in real time what you're talking about when you're trying to explain things like a freckling effect, etchings, rids that aren't going to be taken care of. And of course they can also see what it looks like to remove swirls and not those things of course on other people's vehicles that are similar to theirs so they get an idea of what this looks like. Now the third solution to a problem like this so that you are not somebody emailing me in this type of situation asking what to do is to really dial in your understanding on the front end. There actually is a time to say no to details like this. I often do not do paint correction like this because once again there's a point of no return where the detail is going to be introduced to the situation. You're only going to bring that black paint back to a certain point and there's just nothing you can do about it. If you're not going to wet sand and repaint and clear coat the paint itself, you're going to be in a certain situation where the customer might just be dissatisfied with the results altogether. Often customers overestimate what paint correction can do to the paint because they think their car isn't too bad or they're just not exposed to the situations like you and I are as detailers. And so they don't have the context to project into the future and decide whether or not the results are going to be what they want or don't want. It's why I think a test spot in real time is such a powerful thing to do with any given customer. Now just as a bit of a piece of bonus advice here, you guys might be wondering what's the pad and polish combination that you would suggest for people who are getting involved 
in the pain correction world or who want to get really good results or just dial in their skills without having to get a bunch of different products. I really like the microfiber cutting disc from Lake Country and the Clear Coat Solutions CSI Ceramics Polish. Both of these in combination work really, really well on 100% of vehicles. It's my go-to polish. Yes, I use other pads. Yes, I use other polishes. But these two I like to use in like 99% of situations because of the versatility of both this product and this pad. It becomes a really good combination for me. Now guys, like I said, before you bounce off this video, go below in the YouTube description box and grab the free essential detailing toolbox, the top 12 list of tools and products I suggest for you all available for under 500 bucks. It's a very helpful free resource and I would love to help answer any questions about that list that I can. You'll obviously receive my email when we send that to your inbox. Guys, thank you so much for watching. The products I mentioned here are going to be linked up in the YouTube description box below. And if you think this information is helpful, feel free to share this video on any of your social platforms. Share it anywhere you'd like because I think this kind of information getting out to detailers is going to help them avoid a big world of pain because they can learn from other people's mistakes rather than just their own trial and error. And as always from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, thank you for watching. Keep working hard and I will see you guys in the next video.